Hello everyone, today we read and comment on the 13th paragraph of the first chapter of the first book of von Clausewitz, von Krieger. The title being There is only one cause which can suspend the action and this seems to be only possible on one side in any case. So, here we go. Um, if two parties have armed themselves for strife, then a feeling of animosity must have moved them to it, as long now as they continue armed, that is, do not come to terms of peace, this feeling must exist, and it can only be brought to a standstill by either side by one single motive alone, which is that he waits for a more favorable moment for action. Now, at the first sight, it appears that this motive can never exist except on one side, because it, eo ipso, must be prejudicial to the other. If the one has an interest in, in acting, then the other must have an interest in waiting. A complete equilibrium of forces can never produce a suspension of action, for during this suspension he who has the positive object, that is the assailant, must continue progressing. For, if we should imagine an equilibrium in this way, that he who has the positive object, therefore the strongest motive, can at the same time only command the lesser means, so that the equation is made up by the product of the motive and the power, then we must say, if no alteration in this condition of equilibrium is to be expected, the two parties must make peace. But if an alteration is to be expected, then it can only be favorable to one side, and therefore the other has a manifest interest to act without delay. We see that the conception of an equilibrium cannot explain a suspension of arms, but that it ends in the question of expectation of a more favorable moment. Let us suppose, therefore, that one of two states has a positive object, as, for instance, the conquest of of, uh, of one of the enemy's provinces, which is to be utilized in the settlement of peace. After this conquest, his political object is accomplished, the necessity for action ceases, and for him a pause ensues. If the adversary is also contented with this solution, he will make peace, if not, he must act. Now, if we suppose that in four weeks he will be in a better condition to act, then he has sufficient grounds for putting off the time of action. But from that moment the logical course of for the enemy appears to be to act, that he may not give the conquered party the desired time. Of course, in this mode of reasoning, a complete insight into the state of circumstances on both sides is supposed. So, this is a kind of very uh, logical uh, paragraph, which von Clausewitz is fundamentally justifying the um, waiting mm, for a more favorable moment as fundamentally a, uh, the, the, the seemingly only possible um, reason to suspend the, the military action, fundamentally, uh, into, a, into a fight. So, he says, if two parties have armed themselves for strife, then a feeling of animosity must have moved them to it. Mm? So, um, I, rem uh, I re re remind you that this is fundamentally still a um, work in progress as a system. That is, uh, von Clausewitz is demonstrating step by step something new. So, we, sh we are still in partially in this hybrid realm of, mm, of theory and, uh, uh, let's say, of pure theory and applied practice that now starts uh, discovering itself for how eventually this mitigates and controls and modify the practice of the military action as if this was a pure action without any control. Actually, at, at this point we have already seen how uh, politics, in fact, uh, has this uh, massive influence on war and, and practically controls and modifies it at all times. So this is also, by the way, the way through which uh, von Clausewitz accepts that there is a further, uh, you know, uh, movement motive for the suspension of, of hostilities, because essentially waiting for a more favorable ac a moment for action is naturally entailing 
um, something else that it is not strictly you know firm to to the fight that naturally has um, its own laws but it, it is determined by the contingent situation that is definitely influenced by non military non strictly military uh, elements or elements at least that intervene externally to determine the, the military action so you have a mo you must have a, a motive a feeling of animosity that brings you to have uh, moved yourself into the strife mm -hmm. so you're moved uh, literally pushed by this well you'll go on um, so von Clausewitz says as long as now as they the two um, fighters the two parties continue uh, armed that is do not come to terms of peace this feeling must exist so it's obvious that as long as you know there is no peaceful settlement for which arms are kept being used and nobody is willing to seize this is still uh, moved by such feelings by such animosities such hostility etc and then he states and it can only be brought to a sense still by either side by one single motive alone which is that he waits for a more favorable moment for action mm -hmm. so there is this exception that is given this this mm, um, for which von Clausewitz gives us this background so he he's answering the question directly saying as if you know uh, these motives for waiting for a more favorable uh, situation fundamentally were to happen you know every once in a while episodically and fight and, and war was just this continuous fight but this is in fact the theor theoretical aspect while in reality we add this to von Clausewitz in, because he's still developing so we foretell how the thing happens uh, kind of every moment is fundamentally <coughs> elib eligible uh, more or less likely for such suspension of the action because at all times in war basically you don't fully know what what the hell is going on at all times so you always have to take action fundamentally with a certain degree of risk first of all and secondly uh, therefore essentially having if anything to calculate that risk even if you are fully determined to take it mm -hmm. that's why at the very end of this paragraph as we have read von Clausewitz uh, reveals uh, I mean stresses once again the the relative uh, the, the theoretical side of the story because he says arrived to that conclusion that now we will see he says of course in this mode of reasoning a complete insight into the state of circumstances on both sides is supposed that is fundamentally this is still given for granted that everybody kind of as knows more or less what the the situation uh, from the enemy uh, his own situation actually because that's also problematic in in, in close of its in theory to achieve if anything it's impossible so here you see that there is this swinging towards the extremes of theory, theory and practice that um, always um, are actually compenetrate each other into the real military action. Just let's remember that von Clausewitz, albeit making these theoretical points, here we are at the, we are at the very beginning of the Vomkriege. He is still making a um, he he is still always interested in real war. So this introductory. I mean, not even introductory at this point, but these initial uh, paragraphs are basically settling, setting the, the principles from which the world theory develops, g gradually getting into the real practice that 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 von Clausewitz is is interested in exclusively, because he doesn't mind about these absolute uh, abstractions or, or theories. He um, in in uh, in the way they they uh, he has presented up to now so these kind of absolute situations were that that are irrealistic but he needs them necessarily to make you explain why in turn they are in fact not absolute and then in war uh, things happen uh, in in ways that you that you that will never they're never fully uh, ideal and and that therefore you have to understand on, on that this realistic base mm -hmm. uh, we have seen it also in the, in the previous paragraphs f think about the uh, the resulting war is never absolute that that's a powerful paragraph we have commented you know, read and commented on because that shows you that uh, in that case war 
basically is never unleashed with uh, at its fullest and it's practically impossible to do it uh, even if you had the strongest will determination and work you can't practically achieve that because even in, in in the realm of physics that's practically impossible because you can't elevate you know unleash it in, in just you know one instant mm -hmm. and we've already seen that but this is just for telling you that von Clausewitz here is continuing on on the line and discovering uh, making us discover step by step these other elements this time is the turn obviously of this suspension of the action that is justified by the waiting for the more favorable moment mm. more so it's relative mm. so it, it how this is to be determined now it's uh, it depends still on you this is the close of its ingenious that it, it, uh, he perfectly understood that there is no manual you can apply in war in uh, in the strict positive scientific absolute sense that other other philosophers wanted to give is that as a base to 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 explain how war practically works. Von Clausewitz here is debunking this this not really the principle itself, which is still valid, but how uh, uh, war fundamentally is uh, m the the military action is modified and controlled constantly by factors that have not properly to to do with that. So this is particularly important because it's really the core of, of the Clausewitzian doctrine in uh, in terms of how in fact it's it's built around it. Mm. Then he says now at the first sight it appears that this motive can never exist except on one side because it by itself eo ipso must be prejudicial to the other. Mm. Um, so this is um, and he, he, he goes on, if the one has an interest in acting, then the other must have an interest in waiting. Mm -hmm. So that's mm, that's kind of, uh, the, here it's the reciprocal actions that are coming back. Mm -hmm. Remember the reciprocal actions in the first paragraphs. This is fundamentally one of them. I mean, th if this is meant to be a, uh, a system, a mathematical system, it's obvious that if there is this low reciprocity, if there is one uh, one party that is more interest uh, that has more interest in acting than the other has necessarily more interest in waiting, because he can uh, at that point um, play on the fact uh, uh, on the attrition that will follow for the first side to take action fundamentally that already will consume some resources and so on while uh, the, the waiting may reinforce in the same uh, time the, the the other the other party. And and this is something that is is very um, I mean uh, it's very even in every kind of war I mean they, they think about the value of initiative you know leaving the initiative to to the enemy is uh, detrimental and and this is interesting because here the action of reciprocity is not just it it's 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 actually heavily mitigated by by the circumstances and that's why von Clausewitz for instance attributes in fact to we will see now the, the positive object to the attacker and uh, with a str with a weakest f for a weaker form of war that is the, the attack, while a negative object to the uh, to do to to the defense uh, to to the def to defense um, that instead is a stronger form of, of war. Excuse me, I drink a little bit because there is a sort of physical decay at that point that if um, you tend to delay the action uh, at that point doesn't matter whether you're an attacker or defender however the whole system will tendentially uh, degrade and therefore you will kind of add more um, more damage to the same uh, more loss of energy to the same so mm, a greater loss of energy so this uh, reveals why uh, quick action is also best and, and that's fundamentally what von Clausewitz has, has explained us up to this point that there is an absolute there is always the tendency towards the absolute toward the utmost of fort remember uh, well this is never to be met but theoretic in, in pr I mean theoretically but in, uh, in, and also practically of course 
uh, or better, let's say it can never be met practically, but theoretically, you should always stand towards. So uh, we have seen also when von Clausewitz um, talks about the uh, human uh, um, tendency to also become lazy fundamentally and try not to be under, try to avoid this constant pressure. That is generally something human nature tends you to, to make you avoid. It, well, that that is I instead in towards something that should be pursued as much as possible and naturally you meet an attrition here because you're increasingly under pressure you have to uh, exert this greater uh, energy at that moment and that's what uh, instinctively human mind tends to, to delay. Mm. And therefore um, that's another reason why war is anti-instinctual because actually the, the most effective action would would be uh, meant to, to counter to go into the opposite direction compared to to this um, to this tendency mm -hmm. so as you understand here also a game of, ex of extremes if you want so remember also the reciprocal action this is not a fight against two you know man can mm -hmm. this is a fight towards two reacting bodies and every thing that happens from one side is gonna have an effect on the other one mm. unavoidably I mean even if you know you're an, an idler and the enemy doesn't take action that still influences the system and influences your action more or less of course depending on what the circumstances are but still there is this reciprocity into the into the process mm. And this is just giving two actors and supposing in fact in here that, that, that they both know everything about each other and so on. So just instead think about what we said about things like the allies, the terrain, uh, all factors that can intervene to alter the system and overcomplicate fundamentally the, the, ul the ultimate calculation of the uh, solution of this, uh, of this fight. Then von Clausewitz goes on. It says, uh, a complete equilibrium of forces can never produce a suspension of action. For during this suspension, he who has the positive object, that is the assailant, must continue progressing. Mm. So this is basically uh, what he was telling initially. You know, it, there is a, m a motive for which um, fighters, uh, th these two par parties are, are at war. They're striving against each, against each other. So there is a, uh, a push that is... Uh, a uh, some some sort of mix between of calculated and instinctual factors, um, and um, yet he says you know if forces are perfectly equilibrated, so given that th there is this theoretical uh, also impossible situation to achieve because no no physical measure is equal to an uh, equal to another in in the real world, um, <coughs> or at least you can tend towards the, the infinitely uh, you know, uh, 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 equality, but you will never reach it fundamentally. This yet can never produce a suspension in action, because for for this during this suspension, he who has the positive object, so the assailant, so the one who at least at that point is on on has the the greater motive for being at at war now must continue progressing. Um, this no, we're making the point of a uh, of a fight that has already started, but to make it conceptually clearer, just imagine that you have actually to attack first. You have to sell your enemy, and therefore starting the the hostilities. Well, let's assume that you're perfectly equal to your enemy. Well, at this point, there is an, an equilibrium of forces, right? Because you are equal uh, physically um, in terms of resources and so on, but yet there is there must be one what tax place in a real circumstances you know you can't f find fully you know two um, two beings that want at the same time the same thing in clash I mean, this is this is metaphysical obviously so there is one that has at least at, at every moment one of the two this can vary naturally during the fight but however this um, positive object so the one that is proposing in fact to to defeat the enemy, to compel his enemy to, uh, therefore, to, to to his own will, and 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 the force that that moves the one against the other is always there. So there is always a progress, even given the equality, uh, the the complete equilibrium, the complete equality of forces. 
Mm. Mm. Von Clausewitz says, for if we should imagine an equilibrium in this way, um, so in this, uh, if I'm not wrong here, in this ideal you know, uh, idleness, that he who has the positive object, therefore the strongest motive, can at the same time only command the lesser means, so that the equation is made up by the product of uh, the motive and, and the power, then we must say if no alteration in this condition of equilibrium is to be expected, the two parties must make peace. This is also um, very, very important. We have seen how fundamentally war is just something that happens uh, into the realm of, um, I mean, in, in, in as driven by politics. So politics uh, dictates the, the reasons why wars uh, break out, they're kept being fought and, and so on. And so the ultimate um, the ultimate uh, a goal of any fight is to to reach to, to achieve a, a settlement and therefore to to alter d the equilibrium at the point that um, the there is no reason to go on fighting and the political action can um, uh, once again now do w without uh, the, the military instrument. Mm -hmm. Um, just to remember anecdotally that uh, von Clausewitz has still not said it, he, he will say it, we will read it another time, but that fundamentally and paradoxically, or maybe not so much, but this is what we're meant to say, is that generally, I mean, the, ass uh, the assailant, I mean, not even generally, I mean, really the assailant is the one who is more eager for peace, after all. I mean, this has nothing to do with the beliefs or of the assignment, of his political uh, background or moral, etc. If you attack someone, you are the one who feels more confident to put an end to this fight more quickly, who has the greatest desire for achieving this uh, re-equilibration. Mm -hmm. Whereas the defender says, okay, no, you will, you will now come and get it fundamentally. So he has intrinsically more reason to to keep on fighting, to resist, in fact, in this sense. So the assailant, as we've seen, has this positive object mm, f for which the 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 the, mm, the strife has to r arrive to to a, to a settlement with more. Um, I mean, for for obviously both sides want to a settlement, but the assailant wants it more than the defender. As long as he keeps on sailing, that's actually the the point. Um, so what von Clausewitz has said in the last phrase is uh, that the um, that if fundamentally the the alteration in this equilibrium of forces ceases to be expected, the two parties fundamentally at this point have no reason to fight anymore, and they must make. Uh, make peace fundamentally as the the equation now of the strongest motive is uh, brings to it's a sort of um, in fact a, a mathematical equation you have to multiplicate motive for power mm -hmm. so that you can deliver this change in the, in the equilibrium well if the two opponents say that fundamentally this equilibrium is not to be moved or better because that is in real doesn't exist in reality but Let's say that fundamentally, their 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 motives are not so uh, you know they're gonna achieve this the expected equilibration with it, for instance with it, with any uh, a cost that they're not willing to to pay for this point. Well, the two parties, uh, you know, if the condition is, is such for which also you know they, they both are they, they both agree on this fundamentally. So uh, it's not even a um, at this point, it's not uh, naturally it's not a military thing anymore. I mean, it it it, it politics also takes uh, always um, politics has always the lead in in, in this sense, but uh, at this point, politics ceases to use the military instrument. So there is no need to settle this with further violence, but simply with dialogue and peace can can be made. But if an alter if von Clausewitz goes on, but it, it says, but if, if an alteration is to be expected, then it cannot only be favorable to one side, and therefore the other has a manifest interest to act without delay. Mm -hmm. 
so uh, as long as fundamentally this alteration this wished uh, expected alteration is uh, is achievable and the the cost is kind of okay convenient and this really depends on the individual uh, the this uh, the the two sides will keep fighting um, with a excuse me I, I'm reading it now because this translation by the way sucks from 1832 it and with this English translation is really really bad but it's kind of the quickest way I can get it um, but um, here the reason is that it, it, if if a change is Fa mm, is force uh, foreseen this can be favorable uh, uh <coughs> only for one of the two contendants and therefore the other should act in this sense also without delay because um you can't be passively uh, maintaining keeping maintaining the same equilibrium and has to struggle fundamentally to reverse reverse the situation this is the meaning of the phrase God, this really this translation here really sucks. It should change it in some way, um, or, or translate better directly with some translation on my own. But but th the concept is clear here. Uh, it's full reciprocity laws um, as as we've seen them uh, before. Um, so then he says w we see that the conception of an equilibrium cannot explain a suspension of arms but that it ends in the question of expectation of a more favorable uh, moment to which we are now reintroduced so here von Clausewitz is uh, also preparing for the explanation of why uh, giving a practical example actually um, to explain why there can be a favorable movement for which this uh, continuous struggle can be suspended mm -hmm. uh, even given those laws of rep uh, this uh, reciprocal relations that exist and that dictate the, the fight in many ways uh, in practice or so he says let us suppose therefore that one of the two states has a positive object as for instance the conquest of one of the enemy's provinces mm -hmm which is to be utilized uh, in the settlement of peace. Mm -hmm. So the example is quite clear. You fundamentally um, have uh, this political goal of, of seizing an one of the uh, enemy's provinces so that at the table uh, of peace you can uh, act from a you know, condition of superiority of some kind about your convenience at your convenience and so on at least. Um, so, after this conquest, not not really an, a condition of superiority. Mm? I, I said it, but I didn't mean it. It's, it's very a, a, f a favorable condition for you in that context. Naturally, that can cause problems also in other situations. It's not necessarily a condition of superiority, or at least um, in that given struggle, you may not be even the strongest one. It may be other people or other, you know. Uh, parties that are fighting uh, against you but that this is this is also well actually I believe it can be a condition of superiority as well if you see it uh, but also that also depends in fact on the political motives maybe that province is not so uh, it's not so important for the enemy it is maybe for you so you maybe you don't want this enemy to to attempt uh, to recover the province because it doesn't give a damn about it so it, it or at least it costs more than it would cost more than to him to take it but from you than just leaving it to you that's that's the point so given this example he goes on and says after this conquest so now the conquest is achieved um, his uh, the political object um, is accomplished mm -hmm. so one of the two states has accomplished this political object that is to seat at the peace settlement to say okay I have this promises uh, in my hand now what are you gonna do so then the necessity for action ceases and for him pose I answers mm. because that's that was his objective for war he wanted that province he uses the military instrument he seizes that and and that's it 
uh, here is also a brilliant example of you know uh, the the military instrument used for political reasons. Then uh, he says, if the adversary is also contented with this solution, he will make peace. Contented, not contented. Contented with this solution, he will make peace. If not, he must act. Which is evident. So, it's it's what we have, we have just said. You know, if this enemy doesn't want this province to remain in your hands, want to take it, to, wants to take it back, he 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 has his own motives. We we're not discussing now. That depends on him. Hmm? And let's give that, in fact, he considers this settlement unfavorable and, and fights back. Then he must act. So he wants the provinces back, he will have to fight. Foklasvitz says, now, if we suppose that in four, in four weeks he will be in a better condition to act, then he has sufficient grounds for putting off the time of action. So this is the most brilliant uh, you know, point that is... Uh, you know, self-explanatory and also, you know, very, very logical and and macro, you know, and and easily understandable in any situation. So, if you have this goal, but you have these other factors that influence the way you you can use the military instrument, and this is really the key of the the the, the explanation, then he will have to wait given his motives and intentions and expectations that given time to organize better and then to launch that uh, that uh, and, and start in that action mm -hmm. once again so this is pretty much obvious this is fundamentally explained from the paragraph in which von Clausewitz uh, explains the factors that come to mitigate the kind of absolute war and one of them was in fact uh, things like uh, the terrain so the in, in this sense not the terrain meant uh, say the environment better so all those factors that take make you take more energy to do something like literally marching an army to one place so just for example here von Clausewitz in the example doesn't doesn't tell us what happens in these four weeks what is this guy waiting for? Uh, is he waiting for his allies? Is he waiting to reorganize his army? Is he waiting for actually making his army march for f in four weeks from a place to another than to take action? Because that's those are all things together because uh, how in real war may happen. So there are al always these other factors that intervene generally in to to delay in fact the and to suspend the military action in itself. Um, it's not really a um, even a full sus suspension. I mean, here um, um, is um, it's it's also a kind of a, a, an approximation that swings between the extremes because uh, when the military is put in motion, you don't really have something like you know uh, the the military. Wh wh when is exactly this military action begins? Because even putting the army in place somewhere, we've seen that von Clausewitz talk about these wild extremes that, that can vary in a war. W that you can make a war of extermination, as you can make a war of uh, just an armed show off, where you practically not even um, use force, but just maybe it's deterrent. So just even moving an army is a form of deterrence. And you can't fully understand in here, you not know, even when the military action is actually. Um, when the military instrument is actually actually begins or stops because as long as you're armed you have this potential there uh, in a way or another so it doesn't even take you know I it's not here the, the the conventional military action as we imagine it like starting the hostilities like literally firing the first shot and then or invading an enemy uh, territory or doing something like that um, you you are fundamentally um, still having this in your potential, and that's why, also, from an historical point of view, I mean, in general, in in, in real life, you understand that you can't take 
the military option out of the equation in any case and not just the military option as we imagine it like tanks planes uh, soldiers and stuff like that but really you know the the aggressive the, the aggressive capability of a world of a world country in itself um, the the attrition factors that bring necessarily eventually to even in, in the, the strategic relevance that um, a, a certain uh, structure has or in and this is um, this is so multi-dimensional this is why von Clausewitz is so perfect in this and perfectly valid to describe any kind of mil of, of war scenario but not just that one even a uh, time of pace where still the military has its deterrent and that's why fundamentally we will use I don't know nuclear weapons for it's not that we are very eager to use it we're not very happy to use them but they are there just to prevent further further options so it's not that we are constantly at war which uh, I mean that every country has a nuclear weapon or any other uh, offensive capability is uh, at war with each other but still the, the military um, not the military action but at least the military potential is there so this counts in politics this counts because it always eventually is to be taken into consideration even for before in fact uh, during the suspension of the military action because the suspension of military action in this sense is to be meant like the suspension I think of every kind of hostility I mean this is not just a temporary uh, you know time that you give an um, I don't know an army to resupply uh, or to be backed up and therefore stops and, and, and is uh, uh, taking some time here we're talking about this the suspension of the military act that can happen even over you know uh, times of peace fundamentally so this is why it's so fluid it, it also teaches you that every kind of uh, thing oh that guy shot first or you know that that war was declared let's leave aside that wars are not declared anymore today but that's 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 in fact the point that's the Clausewitzian theory re-emerging uh, powerfully in all its um, absoluteness it is really how it happens I mean the world today uh, has this uh, the, the favorable mo the, there is always a favorable moment potentially every moment is favorable there, there, there is naturally or unfavorable if, if for that matter Th this is completely relative and the conditions under this which are relative are constantly not just military but also political and chiefly political this is the real the real core of the Clausewitz in theory that you cannot exclude by definition your military capabilities even if let's assume you were a pacifist country you, it, it doesn't make sense you still have that potential that has to be considered because it's fundamentally a human potential so your reason doesn't come to dictate how eventually your your reaction it will be in case you are aggressed because we know that things change wildly when they're while you're under threat but this also makes you understand that a the way a so a world society works is w enormously more complex than 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 what an, a single individual works, um, and extremely more unpredictable than a world individual works. And already, a, a single individual is like something extremely difficult to understand. Just ask any psychologist, any psychiatrist. Um, so, this uh, reveals the the enormous complexity of politics in war and how uh, so much is if uh, is fundamentally not controllable or better it always is controllable or modifiable in a certain measure but um, this certain measure is in fact difficult to, to uh, I mean it's, it's difficult to assess how this has an effect on the wall because we here we're talking really about a just just think it physically speaking just think it mathematically speaking just we we all know that a human society is not um, cannot be reduced to an equation 
to a uh, to an expert to yeah to a system it, it doesn't mathematical system that is actually real and it doesn't work like that first of all we don't know any still basically anything on how our brain works I mean we have an, an idea but how uh, I mean this for strictly mechanical things but how our mind actually works we, we don't really know so that is already something we can't describe mathematically speaking if not up to a certain point it still have our insufficient can you imagine a wall social system so what do you do to solve a war to, to fight a war you start making calculations about nothingness because we don't have and we will never have nor the intellectual capability nor the technologies nor anything to calculate ever uh, systems of such complexity obviously not so in politics and in war there are kind of other dynamics that are much more and that we have learned a kind of um, mastering by a certain degree as a civilization uh, obviously through our education and, and you know and program I mean not just you know the first person who comes up is the, that's not biological um, but th there are other kind of arts including the one of war mm -hmm. there is no science of war it doesn't exist in the realm of reality there is nothing like a, a, a science of war there is at best a, an art of war and that's why this art in fact is, is called like this because it, it comes from experience it doesn't come from really a system that you can fully um, scope in, into and understand in all its parts because it's impossible and it's also a waste of time because the you know, the moment you're sitting there thinking about it, your enemy has already stormed your your own home um, with sheer force, um, and 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 this is the greatness of the cause of its in uh, thought, also historically contextualized, because at that time there was a a, a very a, kind of the reverse approach. There was the uh, the fate, the confidence, the the presumption, the the arrogance, if you want, of uh, discovering a uh, fundamentally a science, and therefore by 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 con you know consequentially a, a mathematical model could teach you how to fight, and uh, this is not how reality works. At least this is not this is you know as far as we know in theory there is there would be a mathematical model that would be able to 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 calculate everything in theory given that our mathematics also goes towards the extremes so as long as you tend towards the infinite it's fine too bad we don't know what happens in the in, in the infinite but in, in reality uh, you can't achieve this physically so what do you have to do this is the enormous greatness of the Clausewitzian thought I don't know if you have followed me but we we kind of hinted at it uh, many other times but here you really understand what it fully means so all this overconfidence in fact this positivistic attitude that exists towards war towards you know the confidence even in human progress is is very dangerous because it basically lowers the guard and says okay yeah this is easy we got it no these are systems that are extremely complicated to, to explain I mean I'm making now these videos on YouTube talking uh, randomly about military history uh, you know reading von Clausewitz commenting it but just think about military analysts uh, actual military analysts that are, are out there I mean there are people who study literally their whole life just to figure out even historians actually even military historians to figure out how something actually worked and actually works in the world and it's something extremely complicated so you can't believe just a dude who, I don't know, you find at the bar in the morning and starts talking about, you know, how you should manage, uh, you know, relations with with, with that uh, X country just because he knows best. Because he doesn't. He, he, if he wasn't trusted, <laughs> the lead of that would make everything collapse. And, and, and what is the more interesting in, in this sense, however, is that we as a civilization, as countries, as states, as... Uh, uh, people we have um, after all created pretty effective systems to govern ourselves for instance um, and to use the military instrument I know it's it's uh, basically all we talk about every day in the media uh, is how the systems are faulty and they are faulty by definition they're not meant to be perfect there's nothing like a perfect society
it will never happen. I would say fortunately, because if there was something like perfect society, we would probably cease to exist as a species, because we are actually programmed from a biological point of view to live struggling and solving problems, and uh, being even attracted by the, 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 the chaos. This is what neurobiology, uh, you know, psychiatry t tell us, you know, it's, 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 it's evident. Also von Clausewitz actually incidentally talks about this in one of his paragraphs. And this was a guy living in 19th century, now we're living in 21st and we think to have figured out who knows what. Well, von Clausewitz, as many others, by the way, at that, under th that point of view, psychologically speaking, had figured that out. Um, with the only difference that, you know, people are legitimately fascinated in following neurobiology, neurobio for instance, that is definitely what I also would like to learn an enormous amount of much, but you know, if you start that person making talk about politics or war, he goes nuts because uh, you know he he deals with the thing also completely ideology from an ideological point of view, and be aware that from a in fact from a from a biological point of view instead this is normal. I mean, we as humans are actually as you know the the, the primitive apes that we still are. Um, have one part of our brain literally shut down every time that is the one about something that you know makes your mind work reason properly uh, when talking about politics and violence I mean we are programmed as living beings to basically um, be more instinctual and reactive when things like leadership uh, either political or military is involved and that's why, incidentally, war is the exact opposite of this, because war, and this is the point I was trying to make, is that is waged by, you know, in highly sophisticated ways that have got well past beyond us. And this is a product of civilization. As discipline, for instance, is the product of civilization. Fortunately, uh, aside from what a uh, bunch of drunk nerds think today, uh, we are not warriors anymore, but soldiers hopefully also citizen soldiers, but that's uh, also uh, another story. Uh, because the warrior is fundamentally indisciplined, only fights for himself. A soldier is, uh, is someone who is taught to refrain from instincts, from pride, from, I mean, from, self, uh, from individualistic needs and functions in, into a military system that is mostly you know, rationally um, shaped throughout history. And uh, and that's why discipline always wins over instinct because that's I think not always but by norm in war you know it's not the strongest that wins but the more intelligent and and that's how it it, it it practically works and it works like this because human society is figured out in fact evolving as you know uh, even partially as a species initially because you know it existed a uh, pre human society from which we emerged from essentially you know m most uh, animals are social in this sense as well so that we emerged slowly from this but we progressively figure out into into uh, you know five five thousand years of civilization to or to uh, to do war the way we do that is not just a guy waking up one day and feeling I don't know uh, and, and you know uh, annoyed and takes a club and smashes someone's head just because he feels that. We actually have uh, incredibly sophisticated um, political and military systems that act uh, very thoughtfully, w very considerately, and uh, you know try to, to find out the best solutions to foresee to d and, and spend enormous amount of resources to 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 figure out what how what the best options are and etc. Yes, of course, you can crack in here in many jokes, like saying, yeah, look at many wars that went, like, that they were screwy. Yeah, of course. But uh, as we were saying, we, uh, this, is not a s this is not science. It mostly developed as an art, and this art has to be mastered in some way. It's chiefly through experience, so, of course, mistakes are done, but yet it's still much better than what we used to do in the past. Unfortunately, and this is also something we, we said other, other times. Um, destructiveness did not decrease with improvement of civilization. So also this myth that 
the culturalists would like to exist that fundamentally people who make war just the, the old clubsmen that never evolved and uh, remain kind of primitive violent apes who are kind of also morally inferior because they're kind of it's complete uh, bollocks because it's simply how all humans are and and society is something also incredibly complex and um, difficult even to understand in, in terms of uh, evolutionary perspective and definitely now we, we live in a world in, in which um, that is increasingly m more distant and I would say accelerating in this direction from our uh, primordial our uh, you know, originary basis, you know, f as a society, as hunter-gatherers, at least. And, and this creates problems, naturally, because now, and even, and, and more than ever, I would say, what you need is your um, education. Uh, not brute force, uh, but really figuring out how these systems can effectively be used, because destructiveness has increased enormously. Just think about how warfare was like only 100 years ago. No nuclear weapons, so what the hell? It was completely, it all different. It was a world where, you know, mass armies and the strengths of the, the you know, the, the, the mass society was part, a great part of the equation and so on. So now it's extremely more uh, complicated. Just think about what you can achieve with the digital means and in terms of the even damaging of the enemy. This is you can see it every day. What happens in the world now? We 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 hardly the the greatest wars going on are happening on the markets, are happening through computers and through social networks. Th those are really the um, you know the actions that take also the the the, g <laughs> the greatest um, it have the greatest influence on the changing of the equilibrium. So it's also very important to to remember that the Clausewitzian theory perfectly works into this. I mean it's not even to be adapted. It it really states what it is. So there are people who, you know, for selling books try to write now saying, ah now war has changed because the times in which von Clausewitz wrote were so different. No, von Clausewitz didn't write about Napoleonic Wars. He was he was writing and describing literally how war works in every single age because he was not looking at how it was uh, you know fought in the technical means he was looking at how the the dynamic of a war are phenomenally from a political social military point of view uh, um, and and this never vary because he was describing at that point even a biological dimension of the story, I mean the primordial, uh, you know, uh, hatred, this thing, it, it, he, th they look deeply into the human nature, they're not the phenomenal of war, and that's why the Clausewitzian Trinity uh, is, is so important and it, 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 it is uh, expressible at, at so many levels at that point. So I it's particularly uh, important to recover from Clausewitz today because if we want to cope with the increasing destructiveness that we can achieve and not just through military instruments not tr just through bombs or you know something like that but really you know the harm that we can do on each other just with a click in many other ways well we have to be educated about this we have to be learned um, and we have and we have definitely to study from Clausewitz because if you don't do it, you can't get there. You just get lost in the way and uh, fundamentally taking very disturbing paths that are very uh, much ideological. And there is no alternative. Here, I'm not sponsoring von Clausewitz. I swear, I, I'm not paid for <laughs> for sponsoring von Clausewitz in any way. I, I just do it because this is uh, this is first of all, aside from what I say, it is really what it is. Um, but uh, secondly, because I I'm also personally concerned. I mean, I believe that, I, I mean, I genuinely believe that speaking about von Clausewitz here has an Im a great importance. Um, I don't pretend to be taken as an, uh, an authority or an expert on von Clausewitz where people were way more, uh, uh, but e evidently, I mean, I don't even need to explain it, way more into it, they're real experts and so on. Uh, but, you know, I do this chiefly for sensibilizing people um, about him because uh, it, it's kind of absurd to live in the 21st century in not looking at politics, war, and society in the way uh, von Clausewitz described and still, you know, 
reversing actually reversing towards the same direction that von Clausewitz was uh, was complaining about that it was I mean not complaining but he was describing as the losing one that is essentially the the tribal one the the, the less intellectually developed one uh, the one of the warriors in fact that lose in front of the soldiers never forget this if something has been uh, taught us to, to, in, to history is that generally that's what happens and you can take exceptions as you know if anything just for the uh, you can take them only as the confirmation of this this rule excuse me I, I drink a little remember that laws and rules are two different things um, what else under this There are, uh, as you understand, many, <coughs> excuse me, many, many further considerations you could make. But at this point, to make them every single <laughs> class of its video, I make uh, you. I hope that at least if you're following the series, if you're getting acquainted with with this simple, uh, otherwise very simple, because I'm actually always repeating the same things, maybe in different ways, and naturally starting from different uh, considerations that every time from class of its poses but it, it's the real it, it's the whole system it has to be understood and also that's incidentally how you have to read or study preferably the, the form Krieger not as you know picking the best line you want to to quote uh, on Facebook to show off in front of your friends like understanding that behind that there is a a system that has to be uh, burn in mind, uh, at, at bear in mind at, at, at every single moment if you want to give that uh, quote a, a an actual meaning an actual value an actual use because that's what von Clausewitz wrote this for von Clausewitz very far from being a warmonger he was actually very uh, very we're very concerned about the future of uh, in this case of his country but definitely it, this could be read at the time by by anyone he knew it and in this sense he knew the 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 importance of his thought albeit being a very modest and humble person as we've uh, seen in the introductory videos uh, on to this series mm we were left the the very last paragraph uh, the very last um i don't even know how to say it in english let me check <laughs> because this is what we're talking about now um the very last uh okay close let's say not even paragraph um that is uh, fundamentally the the following but he says from but from that moment the logical course for the enemy appears to be to act that he may not give the conquered party the desired time of course in this mode of reasoning a complete insight into the state of circumstances on both sides is supposed so this is um, this is actually the uh, also the continuation of this recipro reciprocity we have, we have seen because he had just made the example of the side that uh, put itself in motion because um, wants to recover the province but waits for four weeks because uh, at the moment is still yeah, it's not prepared well at this point the reciprocity kicks in once again beca because as a logical course the enemy also will not sit ducks at, at that point who will start um, uh, you know preventing the enemy, the enemy to reinforce it will have to act in a way or in another and also in here here it doesn't say it but um, the the action can be still yet uh, I mean both uh, political or military because at that time you can simply induce someone to make I don't know a uh, blockade let's say on the enemy's uh, trade well that's not a military action uh, but you can actively prevent the enemy uh, from striking back or even delaying this uh, uh,
time uh, the, the, uh, the waiting for the for a more favorable mo favorable favorable moment but this is in fact the point you can and you should do the same in fact so the enemies are always kind of uh, you know the, the two parties are always kind of uh, looking what the, each other does mm -hmm. and uh, and as we were saying before von Clausewitz concludes with this phrase that is also extremely meaningful that is of course in this mode of reasoning a complete insight into the state of circum circumstances on both sides is supposed so obviously always given for granted still our a ideal um, uh, picture in which we decided to you know uh, absurdly pretend that these two parties know perfectly everything about each other that in real uh, in reality it never uh, has never uh, happened in the war so this is the, the real also the, the very important conclusion you realize now how von Clausewitz makes uh, we still haven't read the very best I mean some these are really the foundations of the Clausewitzian doctrine uh, from a in terms of principles of, of, of theory in their fundamental but the best of von Clausewitz in many ways will will come later, especially if you like. And he he was also a very poetical author in many ways. There are certain metaphors we will read that are beautiful, but they're not in fact empty, just nice to read and so on. But they're actually extremely effective and powerful, and always aimed at making you understand what the what what it truly means is, and how these dynamics are. Um, and how these dynamics work uh, uh, ultimately and he uh, von Clausewitz is a great reminder in this sense it's very useful I mean when you read this system you, you have seen how everything is chained logically and how he proceeds steps by steps but every once in a while he actually tells you look remi uh, remind this because uh, let, do not take me wrong here he always here at least now in these paragraphs he's always reminding you that he's not yet done with the uh, you know progressive escalation towards you know full reality let's say in ex explanation and and, and uh, it's it's simply fantastic to read in my opinion and um, and it's so logical you see also maybe I'm not a great reader nor nor a great um, explainer but uh, if you follow it, what what he's saying he he is actually pretty even easy to to follow at least that to understand maybe not because the understanding means always keeping in mind the whole thing he has said up to this point and that is not easy because it's a freaking lot of text but if you have if you have followed the, the the chain and you you're able to remind it you realize that what he's saying saying here is it's very very simple so that's also another thing that many people hate von Clausewitz and even dismiss their theories, his theories, uh, be his theory actually, because uh, they don't understand him, because they're stupid fundamentally, and that whole happens all the time. I mean, I, I believe everybody who starts reading von Clausewitz says, "Okay, but this is what is this guy talking about?" And it's only studying it, it's only reflecting on it that you understand the genius of this person. I mean, I can't. I I say this every time now that I I never follow anyone in terms. I never had an icon, a myth someone to follow, I'm, I'm kind of a loner, um, do things on my own, I'm even too much. Um, but this is truly, I mean, truly, the only the only thinker, the only uh, person that gives me, uh, you know, I don't know, when I read him, uh, it seems like everything is so clear and that I can't fully trust the him. And just remember, you, uh, you don't have to use blind faith with, with von Clausewitz because von Clausewitz doesn't think you're an idiot. Uh, von Clausewitz that has simply to follow his belief. Von Clausewitz makes you reason. That's why he's so great. So it's not a matter of you know following him because you have read him about him. You know that he talked about war, so it's kind of an authority. It's famous, and therefore you have to follow. You have he wanted you to make you un to 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 understand what he was writing. And he did it at his best. So, and if you if you don't, it's because you lack that. Um, I would say that purity of mind that you you necessarily have.
to use um, every time you want truly to truly learn something new without prejudice without um, uh, without uh, ideological uh, ideological blinkers fundamentally because that's what I think this is at the end of the day the great sound the great it's all a psychological problem it's not that people are not capable of understanding our brain is able to understand you know, incredibly incredible things what what we do constantly and, and the way we ruin our war our i mean our social world with is 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 in fact refusing to understand so there is not a worst stupid that he w doesn't want to understand and and that's the real problem with with you Bec because for the rest unless you don't have you, you don't have some problem uh, some health problem you you have no reasons not to understand and uh, and it takes uh, yet it takes time it takes understanding it takes uh, patience is also very rare a very rare commodity nowadays and um, and that's what phone calls of it stitches us because you we can't understand it from if you buy the book <laughs> from the size of the foam Krieger so uh, that takes a while before fully processing it for fully absorbing that because it's a um, some it's it's a heavy uh, load altogether let's say but uh, at the same time every every page is like gold in my opinion and uh, you have to treasure it and to to come back there and to to read it uh, once uh, again and again because that al that's ultimately also how books should be used books are not meant to be showed uh, around <laughs> in the library without you know it's better to have this consumed pages because you have been uh, you know reading uh, and um, and um, and and leafing through over and browse over over again on them and uh, otherwise we come back like into the late Roman Empire when books were used just you know the, the all the co only the covers were now so to be showed with uh, well or en enriched with uh, with gold and pre precious stones and all this stuff but nobody actually read them. Uh, books should be our daily bread in many ways and this is definitely one of the books that uh, you should have the first if not I want to say you know the, the first place well of course not there are other books that are read that are surely very important for every one of us in different ways but this is definitely one one companion one, one friend uh, that you can always rely on next to you and to understand so many important things about our world in our society etc so uh, yeah for now we stop here um, then the next time we will read uh, this other paragraph that is uh, uh, thus a continuance of action will ensue which will ad advance towards a climax this is also very important albeit brief and And uh, then we will uh, browse into the, the the concept of polarity and so on, etc. Et it is also very important in today's world because polarity does not exist in reality. Um, this geopolitical polarization. So already, the word geopolitical, just for you to be aware of it, doesn't mean absolutely anything. And uh, Polarization in this sense is also, you know, it, as von Clausewitz puts it, it, is brought into requisition, literally, because, and we will see now why. But uh, I don't open other, <laughs> other I, I don't digress further because maybe these are renownedly too long, and now I, I will cut it off. So next time, uh, for now, I just hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it. Otherwise, leave a like. Or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming contents that will simply make you appear my videos more frequently into your, into your, um, you know, into your feeds. That that's pretty much it. Um, and for now, uh, I thank you uh, as always. By the way, heartily for listening to me. I wish you a nice time and see you next time. Bye.